We've seen how exponential form and logarithmic form are intrinsically linked. One can be converted into the other. It makes sense then that as we have the laws of indices, that there would also be laws of logarithms and ways to combine them. Okay, So if we remind ourselves of the laws of indices, like the main bits that we need to take note of, that if I multiply with the same base number, because this is effectively the base number, the A, then the indices get added together. And when I divide with the same base number, the indices get subtracted from one another. And also, we have when we have a to the m to the power of n, we have a to the m n. And last but not least, a to the 0 is 1. There then must be uh, logarithmic laws that relate to these. And there are. OK, so the first one connects with this first law of indices here. If you have the same base number for the logarithm, OK, so let's say I had log base b of x plus log base b of y, then this would be log base b of x times y. So in actual fact, what we're seeing is that when we're adding the logarithms, we are multiplying the x and the y, what is within the logarithms here. So we can combine two logarithms. So a plus becomes a times, in much the same way as a times became a plus. Okay, So that is how they are connected. So it then stands to reason that if I subtract one from the other, so if I have log base b of x, take away log base b of y, then this is log base b of x divided by y, where a subtraction becomes a division, much in the same way as a division became a subtraction. So these are the first two laws of logarithms. We then have... The third one, okay, a third law of logarithms, where if you have x outside of a logarithm, so let's say we have x log base b of y, then this is log base b of y to the power of x. This is connected, although it looks quite strange, it is connected to this third law of indices here. Effectively, what's happening is that the number in front of the logarithm, or the expression, can be brought up to the power of what is within the logarithm. So the x can come up to the power, as it's done there. And vice versa. If you have a power of x, then it can be brought down to the front. So these are three very important things to remember, these three laws of logarithms. Now, we also have um, some consequences of indices that it is important to then link in with logarithms. Firstly, we have this, a to the 0 is 1. Well, if I convert this from this exponential form to logarithmic form, then log of base a, so let's use base b because I'm using a b here, so log base b of 1 would be 0 because b to the power of 0 is 1. So that means that if you find the logarithm with any base, okay, providing it's um, positive. So log base b of 1, so if you try log 3 of 1 or log 500 of 1, you will always get 0. Okay, Much in the same way as regardless of the number that I have here, if I put it to the power of 0, I will always get 1. So that is important to remember. It also stands to reason that if you have log base b of, so b to the power of 1, 
you will always get B. So if the base number and this number are the same, then this will always be 1. So for example, log 8 of 8 will be 1, okay, as an example of this. So these two facts are also very important to remember. But it is these three laws of logarithms that we are going to be practicing in the next few videos.